How y'all doing? Everybody all spread out? All happy to be here this morning? Huh? There ain't no better place to be on a Sunday than in the house of the Lord. Amen? I, I mean, I, that's where I want to be. I'm here to tell you, this is the place to be on Sunday mornings. I don't know if you know, but we got a great church here. It's a good place to be, and, and it's a great place to be on Sunday where we can come and worship God. And so we're thankful for that today. I want to welcome you to the Stony Run Pentecostal Free Will Baptist Church. Doesn't that sound like a commercial or something, right? We should, I should get on the TV, right, and be like, well, I want you to come on out to Stony Run Pentecostal Free Will Baptist Church on Highway 55 on the way to... Right? Amen? We got to sell this thing here, right? Huh? Come on. I mean, look, if I'm not excited to be here, then, then I know y'all won't be, okay? And I want you to be excited to be in the house of God today. I'm here to tell you, I don't know if you've looked outside in the world right now, but it's kind of gloomy and, 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 I mean, it's, we got a lot of folks who are sick right now, right, in our congregation. Um, I'm very well aware of that, praying for all these folks. There's people all over the place. We got all kinds of stuff going on, but I'm here to tell you that our God is still reigning. Amen? We still serve the Most High God. We still serve the Lord Jesus Christ. And so I want you to remember that. Look, through the midst of all this, we have victory in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Look, I'm here to tell you that if you leave this world, well, you're going to step into victory. I promise you. I mean, it, it's, it's, it's beautiful. So, so we're excited for that. Some announcements, of course, i got to do some announcements. Um, we will not have prayer tomorrow night at um, Blackman's Grove. They We've talked, and they decided that they were going to suspend that for a week or so. But we will be here Wednesday night for Bible study, okay? So, so come on out. Um, Joey's going to be here for the youth and everything, so please bring, bring your youth and everything. We're really trying to get Wednesdays going again, okay? Amen? Anybody ready for Wednesdays to get going again? Come on, anybody? Come on. Now, I need you, I need you to come out and, and help me, because see... I could stand up here this morning and say, we were going to have a virtual service on Wednesday. And you know what would happen on Wednesday? I would virtually have no people here. Okay? So I want you to come out. If you feel comfortable, come out. If you feel like you need to wear a mask, wear a mask. Okay? If, whatever, whatever, whatever your comfort level is. If you feel like you need to sit way over in the corner over there by where Brother Glenn is right now and put you a chair over there by yourself to where you feel like you can come to church, then you go sit over by Brother Glenn. And that's okay. Because I just want you to be here to worship the Lord. All right? Look at, look at, look at, look at, look at, look at what we got going in here. Y'all, Dolly and Marvin coming with us today. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Man, it's good to see you guys. May you speak? Sure. Would you like somebody get her a mic? Because we won't be able to hear her without a mic. Oh, I know, I know. We won't be able to hear it. But the people listening online they won't be able to hear a thing you say and they'll, then they'll, then Carrington will get a, a thing and they'll say we can't hear Dolly turn Dolly up so so go ahead sister Dolly is up this morning hey man I'm just saying and, <laughs> and I want to thank Sonder Run Church for allowing the love of God to come into your hearts to your mind and you responding to it amen you have shown your love in so many ways. We have felt your prayers. There's times when I felt like I couldn't move my body. And I said, Marvin, I just can't move it. And I said, pray, and he would pray, and I could see the results. Yes. And I want you to know that he's standing by me. Amen. And he's still loving me. Amen. And I'm not the woman I was when I was 80 years old. <laughs> but I tell you one thing. I love my Marvin, and I love God, Amen. and I love the people that serve God and those yes. that are not. This morning in our prayer, I heard myself saying, Lord, bless those churches wherever they are that are not recognizing God. That's right. We should pray for those congregations yes. that they will let the Spirit of God speak to them and obey them. Yes. I didn't come to preach, but I want to come to say thank you. And Marvin says, God bless each and every one. We're Amen. Proud to be here. Yes. Get this mic. I'm coming to get it, sister. Good. Next thing you know, you'll get in the spirit. Man, we won't, we won't. Then it'll be on then, right? Brother Ronnie jumped right on that wagon with you, so then it'll be a good good morning. Well, it's just good to have him here today. I'm telling you, that's y'all made my day. Praise the Lord. If nothing else goes goes right today, it's good to see Dolly and Marvin here in, in service with us today. So so once again. Come on out on Wednesday nights. 
uh, we're really we're studying the book of John. I pray that that I make it exciting and uh, and something that that you can use in your daily life. So so please come out. Our mission emphasis um, is hold the children this month. So I want I want to give you a little bit of background for this. Carrington's got us a little video. But see, the reason why we're doing this mission emphasis is we met the director of that at our mission trip in Tennessee this year. Her name was Courtney Carrington, and she really has a heart for these children. Um, they, they serve in all these uh, countries around the Caribbean and places, but we're actually emphasizing Haiti. Um, that's a place where it seems like that... Um, it's kind of like the hee-haw song, gloom, despair, and agony on me, right? I mean, that's kind of what that place is. And we, living here in the United States, as blessed as we are, as good as we have, and I know that there's nobody here that's, that's listening to me right now, goes to bed hungry unless they want to. I mean, that's, that's how good God has been to us, man. I mean, God has so blessed us in the United States. I don't understand why people hate our country so right now. We live in the greatest country in the world. We are so blessed beyond any measure. And we should just be just, just thanking God every day that we wake up in the USA. Every day that by the accident of birth, I was born American. And I was, I was born here. Amen. Well, we have the opportunity to help people around this world. That's why God's given us. See, what God, when God gives you something, then you're held accountable for what God has given you. I mean, you, you've got to be a steward. You've got to use that for the kingdom. And so our mission emphasis this month is hold the children. And so I'm going to have, uh, Carrington, can you play us a little video? I think we got a little video for that. Hold the Children is, uh, stands for His Outreach for Learning and Development. Uh, so our, our mission, our, our, our focus is really around preparing kids for life through education and through uh, the orphan care here at, at the Hold the Children Home. Currently, Hold helps provide an opportunity for more than 2,000 children in 11 schools to get an education. This is accomplished through sponsors who contribute $30 a month to help support the cost of operating a school. It is our belief that education is the key to breaking the bonds of poverty. I believe education uh, offers hope for the future, and when it's Christian education, it really offers hope for the future into eternity. Also, HOLD oversees and supports an orphanage in Laveau, Haiti. 43 children who've been rescued from abandonment, abuse, and neglectful circumstances live at the home. In addition to providing for the children's physical, spiritual, and emotional needs, HOLD wants to equip them with necessary tools and skills to be successful in life after the orphanage. The cost of caring for a child at the HOLD the Children home is approximately $5 a day. The home is supported by the financial gifts of churches and individuals who believe in what we are doing. They say they can uh, take care of a child for five dollars a day. Five bucks a day, y'all. I'm here to tell you. You know, anybody go to Starbucks? You know what a star? And some people look at me like oh, I would never drink Starbucks. A lot of people drink it. Trust me, because I see the line all the way out in 421. You know how much a cup of coffee costs at Starbucks? At least three fifty, right? Now, now that now you you you're on the low end of the scale because my wife gets ones that are fancy and they're about seven bucks a piece, okay? But I'm here to tell you, five dollars a day. You can change the life of a child. That's a very small investment. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna challenge y'all today, and I'm gonna I'm gonna take up the challenge, okay? Here's here's my challenge for you today. Five dollars a day, that's $150 for a month. I'm going to be the first one to stand up here, and I'm going to pledge $150 to these children in Haiti, all right? Because as your pastor, I should never expect you to go anywhere where I won't go. Amen? Yes, brother. 
Amen. Amen. There's another 150. But I want you to let the Lord speak to you this morning. And if God's called you to do this, I want you to go ahead and bless this, this outreach this morning. I mean, I feel like, and I feel the Holy Ghost this morning. I feel like, I feel like God's really, really in this. Look, we are so blessed, y'all. And I'm going to tell you, and, and I, so, I'm, so I'm asking you to give from your heart today. Uh, we, you, can, you can give online. Um, they, they've got a, a line item for that online. You can give here with a check, however you want to do it. You can give cash, just earmark it on envelope. But please, make it an emphasis. When we put these missions, the emphasis is up every month. It's for us to be able to give and bless people around the world. My, my vision here, and see, I know we're all messed up this morning, right? So we're just going to go ahead and, and mess it all up, okay? Here's my vision at Stony Run, some of it. Some of my vision is to impact the world around us, okay? It's our job as believers to impact the world around us. It's our job. When we take up collections, which we're going to take one up here sometime. The guys are back there. Lord, please help them be quiet. But we're, we're going we're gonna to take up a collection sometime this morning. But the money that you give in that collection for your tithes and your offerings, my, my goal, my goal at Stony Run, when we have these mission emphasis, I'm looking, this is my goal, this is what God's laid on my heart. I'm looking that we give $1,000 every month here at Stony Run to a mission emphasis. Okay? I'm looking for us to give $12,000 a year to missions. All these missions, local missions and foreign missions. Notice that we do we do a local mission one month, we do a foreign mission the next month. Right now we're on foreign mission. Next month will be a local mission. But I'm looking for us to give $12,000 out of this church this year. And you may say, well, that's a lot of money. That's not a lot of money. Remember, we're talking only about a very small um, donation. If each one of us would pledge $100 a month or whatever, you would see every bit of that and then some, right? I mean, we would easily surpass all that. And I'm here to tell you that my God has the cattle of a thousand hill. My God has no lack. My God keeps his money in our wallets. That's where it comes from. Amen. So, so I'm looking, I'm looking, my vision is to see that we, we pour a thousand dollars a month into these outreaches. And I ask you, out of the generosity of your heart, that you give, okay? And, and I'm going to, of course, I'll talk to the board of some of my board members are here and they're like, oh, we're really getting in trouble now, Rick's going. <laughs> Glenn's back, they're like, please, Rick. No, I'm just kidding. But, but I want us to, if, if, if you guys don't hit that goal, then I want us as a church to match to every month that we give a thousand dollars I believe you know what I believe I believe that you reap what you sow that's biblical principle y'all you reap what you sow if you sow generously then you will reap generously and I believe that I believe and I'm not a, I'm not a prosperity guy I'm not not nothing like that but I believe that that's a biblical principle and so as, you, as we look at these things, make sure that, that you give knowing that, that we, are, we are sowing in the people's lives and we will reap a benefit from it. So I'm, I'm so thankful. Um, please give to hold the children this month. I'm going to give $150 so that it's, it's there. Y'all, please give as the Lord has, has blessed you. I do want to go ahead. We, last month we, we um, gave to Southeastern, which was a, a, a rehab facility that was in, in, in need. We sent them clothing. We sent them a, a financial blessing. We sent all that stuff. So we've got a very, very short clip from them, I guess, to, to thank you here at Stony Run for that. So Carrington, if you could just go ahead and, and play that for us. Thank you, Stony Run Church, for your continued support of Crossroad Ministry. May the peace and joy of the Lord Jesus Christ be with all of you. That's for y'all. Amen? You're changing people's lives. See, we all say, what can we do? Man, there's so much you can do. Amen? And if you can't go, then, then, then send someone who can, or finance someone who can, or do what you can. But I'm just, you know, so, so that's who we need to be as a church. I want us to be, when people talk about Stony Run, they'll say, man, that's a, that's a given church. That's a, that's a church that loves people. We, got this, we write this stuff up here, right? Loving God, neighbor, and saving souls. That's who we are. Amen? And, that, and that's what we need to do. So, so please um, make sure that, that we, we give in a way that, that shows that we... Because see, here's the thing. Talk is cheap. Right? 
You can say what, whatever you want, but your actions speak way louder than your words. And I am thankful that I go to a church, that I pastor a church that's, that's loving, that's caring, that's giving, that's willing to go out and minister and willing to, to, to give and do all these things. So, so just, you know, come with me on this one, y'all. Next Sunday night, September 26th, we're going to have a baptismal service, okay? Anybody that wants to get baptized, um, please see me and I'll have water there for you. Amen? I'll even heat the water. Praise the Lord. We won't even do cold water. We'll do warm water. But, but please come out next, next Sunday, September 26th. We are going to have a baptismal service that will start at 6 p.m. that Sunday night. It's always a blessing. I mean, even if you're not getting baptized or whatever and you don't have family members, come on out and, 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 and uh, support your brothers and sisters in Christ that are making a public profession of their faith. That they're standing up and saying, look, I've chosen to follow Jesus Christ. And, and so it's so important that we do that. Please come out for that. Seniors Bingo, Monday, September 27th at 1030 that morning. We have seniors that come out and play bingo. Um, please come out. You don't have to be a senior and you don't have to be retired. If you happen to be off on a Monday morning and you need something to do or you want to have some good fellowship and food because now we do eat, please come out September 27th that Monday at 1030 a.m. Also, I want to make one more announcement and then I'll hush, okay? Homecoming, October 24th. We've got Tom Rupp coming. I don't know. Do any of you guys remember Tom Rupp? Does anybody remember Tom Rupp? We got Tom Rupp. I, look, and I'm going to tell you how this happened. Now, you guys think that, you know, your preacher is crazy, okay? Just know that, all right? Crazy about the Lord anyways. But quite a few months ago, I was sitting on a rainy day on my back porch at the house in the midst of, of when it was the COVID thing was just absolutely just everything was shut down churches were shut down we weren't having services here nothing was going on and everything and i'm sitting back there reading my bible and praying and and i was like lord i i i want to want to get somebody to come to homecoming um i know that that people like to hear me but i would really like to get somebody to come to homecoming and and the lord laid tom rupp on my heart and i had seen him in facebook and different things and i saw that he was in california and so so I sent him a message and said, hey, man, I said, would you come to North Carolina and preach homecoming for us? And he told me, he said, well, good Lord willing, yes. So that was way back a long time ago. It's been a, a year or so ago almost since, since I asked him to do this the first time and talked to him about that. And we have got legs under it and everything. So he is coming on October 24th. He's going to preach a homecoming message that morning. And also the Wednesday after that, he's going to go up and pick up in the book of John, um, wherever I'm at. He's going to do a night for us then too. So please um, come out for that. October 24th, homecoming. We're going to have a great homecoming celebration. We're going to do it like we did it last year. We're going to have all the tables set up. We're going to have myself and the pastoral staff and the deacons are going to go ahead and serve the tables. We'll have the food and to-go plates. We'll do all that stuff. We'll just, man, we are going to just like... Do it like we did last year because it worked so well. And so we're excited about that. Looking forward to it. We're going to have an awesome meal. So please come out October 24th for homecoming. And come see Brother Tom Rupp. So we're, we're thankful for all that. I think that's all my announcements that I, that I have and some that I made up. But anyways, um, but God bless you, man. I'm so glad you're in church today. Amen. Anybody glad to be in the house of the Lord today? Amen. Amen. I'm excited. I'm excited to be here, right? Praise the Lord. Well, what we're going to do, um, normally we have like a meet and greet and everything, um, but I, I'll just uh, give you the opportunity. If you want to meet, greet, whatever you want to do, I'm going to have the ushers come down, take the offering from you guys. If you want to, we'll have an usher in each row, whatever, if you want to drop your collection in. So y'all can come on down. Come on down, ushers. Come on. Come on. Just kind of position yourselves. If you, if you want to make your offering this morning, why, why feel free to do that but we're just thankful we're thankful for this this day that you've, you've given us um, we're going to go ahead we're going to pray over our offering so let's pray over our offering this morning thank God for his goodness Father God we thank you in the name of Jesus Lord for your goodness your grace, your mercy, your love Lord the way that you provide for us God Lord times where we don't know what we're going to do and Lord there you are You've already made provision. You've already made a way. 
And God, I thank you for that today. I thank you that you, you give to us, Lord, that you're so good to us, God. Lord, that you make provision. And Lord, part of being a follower of you is that we're told to give back. To remind us of where it comes from. That every good and perfect gift comes down from you, Lord. Lord, that you bless the gift and the giver. And so, Lord, I pray today that you would bless our offering today. Bless our congregation. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So, so y'all um, can go ahead and, and uh, come to your ushers. And we'll go ahead, I guess. Well, I don't know what we're doing today. What are we doing, Pat? Tell me. There you go. How about that? How about that? How about that? How about that? Praise the Lord. But we're thankful. Thankful for this day. Thankful for our goodness. We do need to have a congregation of prayer too, so so we'll definitely pray over needs. I know we've got folks that are that are in need today. Would y'all please stand with me this morning as we go to the Lord in prayer? got a lot of folks that are sick right now. A lot of folks in our congregation are sick. People in the community. Um, not only do we have folks that are battling COVID and, uh, and sickness, cancer, different things, we also have folks that suffer loss. Amen. And our God is a God who can not only heal our bodies, but they can also heal our hearts. And there's times where we just need God to just, just reach out and just wrap His loving arms around us um, to let us know that everything's going to be okay, that we're going to make it to the other side, that, that things are going to level off. Um, sometimes we just need to be, somebody needs to speak a word of, of, of encouragement and stability into our lives. There's so many things going on right now. So let's go to Lord in prayer this morning. And, and I want each one of you, pray with me this morning. Don't just let me do all the praying. Y'all pray with me, okay? Pray with me because we need to pray together. Pray for those that you, you know are sick. Pray for those that you know are suffering loss right now. Pray for those right now that are suffering financial situations or, or, or family situations or whatever it might be. Lift them up. Pray for our country. Lord knows we need, we need God more than we've ever needed him. And so let's go to the Lord in, in prayer this morning as we pray. Um, Father God, we just come in the mighty name of Jesus. And Lord, we just, we lift you up. We've come here to meet with you, God. We came here today because we knew that when we came together, that where two or three are gathered, that you would be in our midst. Lord, that you would promise us that you would be here. And God, you fulfill your promises. You keep your promises. So Lord, I know that you're here with us today. And God, right now we lift up those that are battling COVID, God. Families that are sick right now, that, 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 that need a touch. Lord, that need healing. But Lord, that also need encouragement. And so God, I pray right now, Lord, that you would encourage and touch those that are, that are being quarantined. Those that are, that are, that are having to, to stay away from loved ones and family and friends, God. Lord, that your mighty hand would be upon them, Lord. That you would just reach down, touch them, God. Overshadow them, Lord. Lord, that your angels would encamp around their residences and their homes, God. That we would know beyond a shadow of a doubt that we've not been left nor forsaken. But Lord, that you are there with us. God, we pray for for healing in Jesus' name. We come against this, this pestilence, this disease in Jesus' name. God, knowing that you are mighty, you are powerful, and you are sovereign, Lord. Lord, we also come today for those that are, that are battling cancer and sickness and other sickness, Lord. Lord, that you would be with them, God. That you would give them strength, Lord. That you would give them hope, God. Lord, that today might be that day that they would look and know where their help comes from. That they would realize and understand that you are a mighty and a powerful God, Lord. That you are there with us every step of the way. That you'll never leave us nor forsake us, God. But you are there. You are our healer. You are our provider. You are the one that's with us, God. And Lord, that wherever we go, Oh God, that you go with us, Lord. We thank you for that today. Lord, I pray for those that have suffered loss, God. Lord, there's nothing like the pain of losing a loved one. 
And Lord, we know that they're not lost in the sense that we don't know where they are, God, that they've gone to be with you. But Lord, that our heart now has a hold. Lord, that, that love costs something, God. And so, Lord, I pray that you would just, you would comfort those today that, are, that have suffered loss, God, that they just need, need you to just wrap your arms around them right now. Lord, that maybe that's all they need today. They just need to know, God, that you're just speaking to their spirit right now, that it's going to be okay, that it's going to be okay. Lord, sometimes that's, that's all we, we ask for is just reassurance, God. Reassure us, Lord, that it's going to be okay. Reassure us, God, that this pandemic is going to end. Reassure us, God, that the pain I'm feeling in my heart right now will end eventually, Lord. And God, I just I thank you today, God. Lord, I pray for the church today. I thank you, Lord, for everyone that's come out today, God. I pray, God, that your Holy Spirit would reign powerfully in us, Lord, that as we sing songs this morning to lift your name, to glorify you, Lord, I pray, God, that you would inhabit the praise of the saints in the house of God, Lord. Lord, that you would just be with us today, Lord, that you would strengthen us, God. And, Lord, we're going to thank you for everything you're going to do. We ask your blessing over us, God. Lord, keep us safe. Keep us well, God. But most of all, Lord, we don't want to do anything or go out of your presence. We want to feel your presence and your power. Because that's why we came here today, Lord. Lord, we came here today to feel your presence. To feel your power. God, to praise the name of Jesus. To lift you up above all things, higher than all things in heaven and on earth. Because, Lord, we know the name of Jesus is above everything. And so, God, we lift up the name of Jesus in the house of the Lord today. So, God, I pray, Lord, that you be with us today. Lord, be with me today as I bring a word. God, that you would, you would empower it, Lord, that you would anoint me. Lord, Lord, anoint the ears and the hearts to hear and receive, God. And, Lord, that I might bring exactly what they need to hear today. Because, Lord, I know all I am is a, is a, is a servant. All I am is a, is, a, is a vessel to be used of you, God. So I pray you use me, God. Use the praise team today. God, use Pat, Sister Pat today as she, as she leads. And God, for each and every one here today, Lord, that you would just use us. Use us to be the people of God that we might minister to one another. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you all.
They say these chains will never break But they don't know you like we do There is power in your name We've heard that there is no way through We've heard the tide will never change got quiet in here. <laughs> Guess it's my turn. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Brother Charles, could I get you to get me a bottle of water, please, sir? One thing I'm not is a dry preacher. <laughs> Maybe not. I don't know. <laughs> oh, I try not to be a dry preacher anyways. Hallelujah. Look, I'm, I'm here to tell you all something. This is, it's, we, we always, Carrington always wants me to have a title, so. No, that's not Carrington's fault. I, I really should have a title for a sermon, though. 
I mean, I, I, I put this stuff together, and they're like, man, we, we got to have a title. Thank you, Brother Charles. Appreciate it, man. It's good. It's good. Thank you. Thank you. So, um, it's my job as the pastor to lead y'all. Amen? And that's my job. That's, that's who I am. I'm, I'm supposed to be the, the leader. I'm supposed to be a, a source of, um, of strength for you. That you look to Pastor Rick and you say, man, Pastor Rick, man, if ain't nobody else got faith, Pastor Rick's got faith. Okay? He believes that, that, that things can be better. He believes that God can answer prayer. He believes that God can heal. He believes that all these things. He believes that a best time for Stony Run is still ahead of us. Right? Not behind us, but ahead of us. Look, I'm looking forward now. I'm going to tell you now, God has great things waiting for us in heaven. But I'm not talking about heaven. I'm talking about here on earth. I believe we still, the greatest times yet for Stony Run Church are still in front of us. And so my sermon title today is, God has never let me down. How many of you can amen that today? God has never let me down. Never let me down. I'm going to tell you, no matter what I face, God has never let me down. When everything in the world has gone crazy... And I'm here to tell you, we're living in a world right now where things have gone crazy. I mean, I'm seeing stuff now I never thought I would, I would you know, we have been, we have been shaken. And, and the thing is, is we, we got to ask ourselves, you know, what can we trust? Because everything that you thought was a constant, everything you thought you could trust in this world has been shaken. I mean, it really has when we start thinking about this. The, the whole pandemic has exposed us as a nation um, that, you know, we have all this stuff that we're divided so many ways, um, politically, racially, economically, spiritually, every, every which way you, I mean, we are divided, we're as divided as, I, I hear people all the time say, I've never seen the country as divided as it is. It is divided right now. We are divided. Um, our foundation has been shaken. I mean, I want you to think about things for a second. You know, when I grew up, anytime you got sick, they just gave you a shot and you got better. Right? I mean, they're like, oh, you're not going to give me a shot, are you? Oh, this will cure you. Don't you worry. Plop, you know. I mean, <laughs> I mean, anything you had, they had a shot for it. They had a pill for it. They had something for it. We, we now we're, our belief in the ability, see, see, we're supposed to trust God, but we always had, we had heavy, heavy faith in doctors, that doctors could fix this, doctors can make this go away, doctors can do this. We, our belief in the ability of doctors to keep us well has kind of gone away. I mean, the world we live in right now is very unstable. We don't know whether we're going to be well one day, sick the next day. Either, every one of us near about have had times where parts or all of our family has been quarantined. Right? To where we, look, I've lived in three different homes in the last couple weeks. I mean, I'm going over here, I'm going over there, we're, going every, we're doing everything we can to try to keep the wheels on the wagon, try to keep everybody working, try to keep the kids in school, try to keep all this stuff going, we're trying to, yeah, we're just like, we're juggling all this stuff, and it just keeps coming, wave after wave after wave, and our belief in, in the ability of doctors to keep us, well, we don't believe in that anymore, because we're like, there's no way, we, our belief in, in, the, in the validity of national elections. Didn't we always used to believe that elections were fair and, and, and that, man, you go and you vote and the best person wins and, and no matter what, that that's the way. But our belief in that's been kind of shaken. Some of us wonder, you know, what, what happened? We don't know. I mean, and I'm not saying that the election was fair or not fair. I'm not saying that, but I'm saying my belief has been shaken. I used to believe in, I mean, I just thought, you know, never thought twice about the validity of an election. Um, what about the belief in, in, our, in our military leadership? Look, I was in the Marine Corps, okay? And one thing I knew is I knew I could trust the military, the armed forces of the United States. And now I'm beginning to wonder about the high leadership. Now I'm not talking about the boots on the ground. Because they don't make those decisions. I was one of those guys. I was a corporal when I was in the Marine Corps, right? You know. No, I'm talking about the high leadership, the high echelon of leadership. Look, all these things, we have no faith in any of this stuff anymore. And our world is like, we don't know what to do. We're grasping for straws. We're trying to figure out what can I can I tell you? <laughs> can I tell you who you can have faith in? There's only one. God. God. Look, if you that's it. 
And, and isn't that only just and right? Shouldn't he be the only one we have faith in? Shouldn't be, he be the one that we know that God has never let me down? Everybody else has let me down. Every situation, everything has let me down, but God has not let me down. Sometimes we just, we just want to say, just stop the world and let me off. Okay, let me get off this thing, man. It's gone crazy. I don't know what's going on. I just want to get off. But I'm here to tell you, God has never let me down. So today I'm going to preach a sermon out of Psalm 46, talking about how God has never let me down, because I feel like we need to be reassured. You need to hear from, from the pastor. You need to hear from the, the fellow that's up here saying, thus says the Lord God Almighty. You need to be hearing from me that Rick says, look, God will not let you down. Amen. Oh, it may look bad out there. It may look dark. It may look like things are all to pieces. I'm here to tell you, God will not let you down. So let's look at Psalm 46. I want to go ahead and read it this morning. It tells us this. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, even though the earth be removed and though the mountains be cast or carried into the midst of the sea, though its waters roar and be troubled. Though the mountains shake with its swelling, there's a river whose streams shall make glad the city of God, the holy place, holy place of the tabernacle of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her just at the break of dawn. The nations raged. The kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice. The earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Come behold the works of the Lord who has made desolations in the earth. He makes wars cease to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow and cuts the spear in two. He burns the chariot in the fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Father God, I thank you for the word. That, Lord, when we look out and we see everything in our lives that we used to trust, everything in our lives that we thought was maybe stable and unchanging is now shifting sand under our feet. Father, I thank you that your word is unending and unchanging and absolutely trustworthy. So, Father, I thank you today that as we look at your word, that we will realize and understand that God is our refuge and our strength. And that we can be still. Know that He is God. And know that if He is for us, who can be against us? It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So y'all, if you would like, if you'd like to turn to Psalm 46, please, please, uh, you know, follow along with me. I'm going to stay in there. I, I don't like getting outside. I like to preach a, a piece of scripture. That's, that's me. So if you don't like that, then you're at the wrong place because cause I, 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 I preach out of the Bible. I mean, I, you know, I, I'm <laughs> that's, that's what we got, right? I mean, I could get up here and tell you stories all morning, but that probably won't help you. But what will help you is what's written in this, this Bible. And so, so I, I try to stay very close to the Word. I want to read this first verse again because I feel like it, it's important. Okay, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Do you believe that today? Amen. Let's, let's read it together. I don't usually do this. We're, I'm doing all kinds of stuff that I don't usually do today, okay? So, so y'all may think I've lost my mind, but, but let's, let's read it. She's got it on the screens up there. We can see it. Let's go ahead and read it. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Okay, now, y'all didn't read. I need to hear you because I need you to convince me today. I, I, need you, I, need you to convince, I need you to convince me that you believe this. I need you to convince Rick. Rick needs convincing today. Look, I need you to convince me. Let's read it again. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Okay, now I want you to understand something. You need to memorize that. Memorize that. 
memorize that. Because see, the things that we're going through right now that we don't have any control over, that we feel like the world is upside down, backwards, sideways, that we have, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. I'm, today, we are in trouble, y'all. <laughs> the saying we're in trouble but God is our refuge and our strength he's the one that's with us this is a psalm of comfort and confidence reassurance I mean that's what we need right now we need to be reassured that it's going to be okay it's going to be all right it may look crazy out there it may look like all these things but but God is reassuring us God is who he says he is you can trust that now the thing is, is there's a difference between head knowledge and heart knowledge okay we, we a lot of us we know the verses we have things memorized but we've not put them into practice in our life we we, we know what it says but every time something happens we go all to pieces every time something oh, we're like i don't know what to do i don't know what to do i'm here to tell you god is your refuge and strength he's a very present help in trouble that if we run into anything god is not going to leave us nor forsake us he's right there he's right there we're surrounded by threats some we can see and some now are invisible I mean, we've never had so many invisible threats now. We don't know what's going on. There's all kinds of stuff going on out there. But God is sovereign. He's in control. Derek Kidner says this in one of the uh, commentaries I was reading. He says, our true security is in God, not in God plus anything else. Our true security is in God. God plus nothing. <laughs> We serve the Most High God. We serve the one that spoke the universe into existence. We serve the one. It, he is our security. He is our refuge. He is our strength. I, you know, I like to think about that. When, when Moses wanted to see the glory of God, and God hit him in the cleft of the rock. Man, I, you know what I need right now? You know what Rick needs right now? I need God to hide Rick in the cleft of the rock as the, as the mess goes by. Hey Amen? Any of you want to get in the cleft of the rock? I mean, allow God just to stick you in there and, and just let all this crazy... It's like a parade of craziness right now in this world. And I want the parade to go by. Lord, hide me in the cleft of the rock so the crazy can go on by and I can come on back out. I mean, that's where I'm at right now, y'all. But I know my God will never let me down. Man, it doesn't matter how crazy it looks. It doesn't matter what we're facing right now. God is sovereign. He's in control. He'll hide us in the cleft of the rock. He's a very present help in trouble. And so I, I looked at this. I was, I was reading, uh, you know, that, that whole thing, a very present help in trouble. And, and so obviously we know what trouble is. I don't need to stand up here and tell you what trouble is because a lot of you are experiencing trouble right now, right? Either at the workplace or, or at, at home or in school or in your life or wherever it might be or sickness or loss or whatever. Man, we are in trouble, all around us and it's like it's one thing after another 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 thing right if you took the last couple years I mean we every single event that's took place could have been like the leading story for a whole year and we've had four or five of them all in one year and we've had stuff that's gone over and over and over and over again I mean but but here's the thing when it talks about God being a very present help in trouble Literally, when you talk about present, you're talking about a help in him has been found exceedingly. Exceeding help. Um, very present. Like we, we, we think about present, being present somewhere. We think about, about that, that God's present right there. But I'm here to tell you, that's not really what they're, what they're talking about in the sense of like that, of location or whatever. They're talking about always being there when we were in trouble. God is always there. When we're in trouble, God never leaves us, never forsakes us. He's never let us down. He's always been there. That's who God is. He's very present in that troubled time. He's very present in the midst of it. He's very present when we don't know what to do or, or what to pray or anything else. His spirit is there with us. He's there. And he's taking us through. We have nothing to fear in this present distress. You want to know why I say that? Let me say, well, how do you know, Rick? <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not prophesying right now. I'm telling you, you don't have no reason to be afraid. Why? Do you remember the last time you went through something? Who brought you through? God. Amen? You remember the time before that? Who brought you through? God. 
And the ten times before that, who brought you through? God, 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 God. He has been a very present help in your distresses all through your life. Every single time when you think you can't take another step, look back. See where he was because he was right there beside you. He was very present. He was taking you through. Why? Because he was there to give you help and strength in that time. We've got nothing to fear. We have got to learn from experience that God is faithful. We need to remind ourselves sometimes, God is faithful, God is faithful, God is faithful. Maybe we need to put that on our mirror when we get up in the morning. And, and when, when you don't, don't even listen to the news. But if you do turn it on, look at your mirror. God is faithful. He'll never leave me nor forsake me. He's our refuge. He's our strength. A very present help in trouble. And Lord knows we have been in some troubles. God does not change he is the alpha he's the omega he's the beginning he's the end he's all those things and god is always faithful but what happens when we hit the problem we develop spiritual amnesia we forget the last time that he brought us through or the time before that or the time before that or the time when we didn't know what we were going to do and god brought us through i'm telling you i see the hand of god in our lives so so visible and so clear that when we go through these difficult things god is always there and he's always brought me through he has never let me down because he is a very present help in trouble he's always faithful the problem is is that when we forget what god has done then doubt doubt what's doubt do to your faith when you wonder is god really going to bring me through this this time is god really going to bring see we've got to dispel the doubt by the faithfulness of god that we know that well every other time he's brought me through why should he not bring me through this time he will always bring you through because he will never leave you nor forsake you he is he is he's dependable he, he's there and we believe in the heart that god is faithful and in the head Sometimes we maybe don't believe it all, but, and that's when we're betrayed by doubt. We wonder, can God handle what I'm going through right now? Can I tell you, yes, yes, he's there, there with you, with you, walking through this thing right now. He'll never leave you nor forsake you. We need to know that, church. We need to know that no matter what we're facing right now, God's not left you. He's not forsaken you. He is there. He's there in the midst of it. I mean, I always quote from Psalm 23 about, yea, though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, right? But there's times when we go through that valley. But He's there with us. His rod, His staff, they comfort us. I mean, he, He's there. He's not left you. He, he is right there. Don't allow doubt to creep. Don't allow the devil to tell you, no, He's not there. Oh, He's there. He's there and He's with you walking through this thing. And, and we need to understand and remember that, that He is faithful. This psalm is a reminder. If you don't get anything else out of this, if, if you don't get nothing else out, just get the first verse. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. And then tag the very first part there on the next verse. Therefore, we will not fear. Why do we not fear? Because God is our refuge and strength. And He's a present help. And He's here. And we're not going to be afraid. But look what's happening. And I, I, I so feel like this is the way the world is right now. It says, even though the earth will be removed, and though the mountains be carried in the midst of the sea, though waters roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with its swelling. I mean, everything that we think is normally a, a strong thing or a sound thing. When we look at mountains, we don't think mountains are going to move. Right? When you drive by Pilot Mountain when you're up there on the other end of the state, every time I drive up there, Pilot Mountain's sitting right there where it's always been. Right? But what happens when the mountains are moving? What happens when, when, when those rivers, that you look at these rivers and you say, well, that river's always been there. We've drove across the bridge. We've always looked at it. It's always, you know. But what happens when, when the rivers are, are flowing over their banks and, and all those things? What, what happens when, when, when earthquakes and all these things, we, it, it shakes our world and, and we don't know what to do then? Because the normal things that, that we grow used to, that, that, are, that, are, that are there, why they don't usually change and, and, and they're, they're steadfast and they're, they're strong. And, and now all of a sudden, everything that we looked at that we thought was a constant in our life, everything is up in upheaval. And that's the way our country is right now. That's the way our world is right now. The world is in upheaval. I mean, things are absolutely crazy. And can I tell you what? Can I tell you? You can't change that. 
You can't change it. God can. But we can't change this stuff. It's way bigger than us. God can, though. But notice this, and see, this is where God comes into the midst of this, because first he tells us God is our refuge and strength, the very present help in trouble. I'm not going to fear, but the earth is removed. The mountains are carried. The waters are roaring. The mountains are shaking. All this stuff's going on. Everything has just gone all to pieces around me. I don't know what to do. I'm in the midst of absolute chaos. But then he says, oh, but there's a river. Oh, hallelujah. There's a river whose streams shall make glad the city of God. There's a river of the grace of God. There's a river of the goodness of God. The holy place of the tabernacle of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her just at the break of dawn. You know, I, I, was, I was looking at this and, and, and reading this. Um, it, it's amazing to me that the city of God, or well, a city of God has got to have people. Who, who lives in the city of God? The saints of God. That's right. Somebody said we do. Praise God. Amen. We are the saints of God. We're living in the city of God. Can I tell you that in the midst of this craziness, there's a river full of the grace of God, full of the goodness of God, full of the love of God, full of all those things that are coming through that stabilizes and settles everything. Hallelujah. That God is in the midst of us and we shall not be moved, y'all. We shall not be. We've got to believe that. Now, see, once again, it's got to go from the head to the heart. You've got to transfer head knowledge to heart knowledge. You've got to actually believe what you say you believe. How do you know if somebody believes what they say they believe? Because their actions will betray them. Right? Because we do, we really do what we believe. We say all kinds of stuff, but we really do what we believe. If you believe that you are in the city of God, if you believe that there's a holy place of the tabernacle of the Most High and God is in the midst of her and she shall not be moved, oh my gosh, that's us, y'all. That's God in the midst of this. And not only that, now I want you to understand something because, see, sometimes things get really bad, right? You ever get to the point where you're like, I can't take another thing? The straw, right? It breaks the poor camel's back. How many of you have had some straw moments in the last year? Yeah? Can't take another thing. I 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 can't take another thing. See, that's... Whew, man. But I want you to understand something. It said God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. But God, I can't take another thing. I can't take it. No, no more things. Not, not one more thing. I can't take that. But notice what it says. God shall help her just at the break of dawn. Y'all ever wait for the sun to come up? Y'all ever wait? You ever waited? You ever waited for the sun? You're like, man, if the sun would just come up. I know. And you know what? It's going to come up. Right? That, you can't stop that from happening every day either. Praise God. That sun's going to come up. Unless there's some cataclysmic godly thing that happens, you know, and, and, the, and the heavens fly away and all that stuff. That's in the God realm. That's not in the people realm. So we can't stop the sun. Man, the sun will come up. I'm here to tell you that God's help, you can depend on that. Because just when you don't think you can hang for another second, when you're like, God, I can't take it. Bam, there's the sun. Oh, man, now it's light. And now you can breathe again. Some of y'all are just waiting for the sun to break through. And you know what? It will. It's coming, y'all. It's coming. It's coming. It says this. The nations raged. The kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice. The earth melted. Don't you understand the power of God? God spoke the universe into existence. Y'all believe that? You believe that today? That he spoke. There was nothing. I have the Spirit of God over, over nothing. Amen? And then he started speaking. You know, and, and, and for six days he created. And, and you know, you notice that, that it took him six days to get to us. You know, he, he put everything in place that we needed 
He didn't make man first and then said, okay, man's going to need this, and man's going to need this, and man's, oh, oh, and he needed that, and I forgot about that, and I can't, no, 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 God, God started creating. He said, we got to have light, we got to have heavens, we got to have, we got to have, have, have sky, we got to have the, the earth, and then we got to have something for him to eat. So we got plants, and we got animals, and we got all this stuff, and, and then finally, it gets to us. It takes a little bit of dirt. And breathes life into us. Amen. That's our God, y'all. That's, that's who we worship. That's who He is. And I'm here to tell you that the nations can rage. Kingdoms can be moved. That all these things can happen. But all God would have to do is to speak and melt this whole thing. That's our God. So I want you to understand. He is sovereign. He is in charge. He's got a powerful, creative voice. We can trust him. Verse 7 says, The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. I mean, I want you to think about that. You know, he, he is with us. He's with us. He's with you today. I want you to understand God is with you today. He's with you. He's not against you. He's for you. He's with you today. And you need to understand that, that he's with us. He is our refuge. And, and when we talk about refuge, we talk about a, a, a lofty city with high walls that, that, that he, he places you inside the refuge. Amen. His angels can camp around you, that he can keep you in that high place. He can take you, scoop you up, and put you in the high place, the place of refuge. But, but not only is he the God of refuge, but he's also the Prince of Peace, right? I mean, look, there's times where all I need is peace. I just need peace, God. I need, I need, I need peace, peace. I, I, just, I just need peace, and, 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 when I, and we can't find it, but God is the Prince of Peace. I mean, I want, I want you to think about this. Listen to, listen to what verses 8 and 9, because I was, I was thinking about this for a second when I was reading and studying the other day. It says, Come behold the works of the Lord, who's made desolations in the earth. He makes wars to cease to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow and cuts the spear in two, and he burns the chariot in the fire. So he, he, he's the only one that can bring true peace. As much as we would like to be peaceful in this world, and, and we, have, we have armed forces, we do everything we can, but we can't create peace. There's only one that can create peace, and that's God himself. We, we do what we have to on our end, but God is the one. God's the one that's going to make the wars cease to the end of the earth. He's going to break the bow and cut the spear in two, and he burns the chariot in the fire. He is the one. And, and can I tell you something? When I started reading that, I started praying. Now, I want you to think about it. Now, this is how crazy I am, okay? Now, remember, you know me, all right? I've been here long enough. You know, you know how my, my brain gets going on stuff. But I started thinking about this for a second. It says that, that he makes the wars to cease. But notice what it says after that. He breaks the bow and cuts the spear in two, and he burns the chariot in the fire. So he breaks the bow, cuts the spear in two, and burns the chariot in the fire. Now, I'm here to tell you, you know what my prayer is? Because, see, I'm going I'm to quote the word of God. He breaks the bow and cuts the spear in two and burns the chariot in the fire. You know all them billions of dollars of military stuff that we lived in, left in Afghanistan? Well, praise God, he breaks the bow, he cuts the spear in two, and he burns the chariot in the fire. I'm believing it. God, hallelujah, he's going to take all that. They're not going to use a piece of it against anybody because God's going to break the bow. He's going to take the weapons. He's going to take the helicopter. He's going to take the Humvees. He's going to take all of it. He's going to destroy it. Because that's my God. That's the one I serve. One that's powerful. I don't serve a mamby-pamby, wimpy God that can't handle things. I serve the God of gods, of all creation, of heaven and earth. And it tells me there that he can make wars cease, that he'll break a bow, he'll cut a spear, and he'll burn a chariot in a fire. And I believe that my God can take all that mess that those crazy fools left over there and destroy it in Jesus' name. That's what I'm. That's my prayer, y'all. When I start, when I read that, I started praying. I said, "Lord, Lord, do it. Let it be so. Let it be so. Let them not never use one of them helicopters. Not never use one of those weapons. Never use one of them Humvees. Never use anything that we left over there in Jesus' name. Because you're the God that can do that. And all I'm doing is praying His word back to Him. Promise, because He promises some things, and and that's where, <laughs> look. That's our God, y'all. That's our God. Whatever you're going through right now, He can handle it. Verse 10. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. Man, I want you to think about that for a second. Be still. You know how hard it is to be still? 
Doesn't everybody want to do something? Right? Don't you want to do something? I mean, just do something. I mean, do something. I, I mean, that's the worst thing in the world because, see, we always want to fix everything. We always want to, we want to help God out. We want to try, to try to help him out. I mean, you know, oh, Lord, I know you need my help. He doesn't need your help. I'm telling you, he can handle this. But he's telling us, be still. Just step back. Regroup. Right now, we've looked at craziness for months now in this country. Step back, regroup, be still, and know that I am God. Uh, realize who God is and what He's capable of. I mean, if He's the God that can speak and the heavens can melt, if He's the God that can break the spear and the bow and, and the chariot and all those things, if He's that God, if He's the one that is our high place, our refuge, our strength, all those things, then let Him be God. Let Him be who He is. It's just... We've got to remind ourselves sometimes. That's why we preach the Word. We preach the same Bible every Sunday, every Wednesday, every time we come here. There's only so much in there. Every sermon's been preached at least a hundred times, a thousand times. Who knows? Everybody has preached every bit of this Bible over the years. And we preach it over and over again. And they say, why do we do this? Because we forget. When as soon as, we, as, soon as somebody slaps you in your face. Anybody ever gotten a fight? <laughs> Anybody ever got in a fight? I mean, you get in a fight, man. We're like, look, I'm here to tell you. You slap Rick Kelly in the face, man, these eyes will glaze over. And we're we're going to get it on, okay? I ain't going to worry about preacher, no preacher. We fit, I'm going to show you something. Isn't that right, brother? Yeah. Well, I, woo! Comes out. It's too late when you've been slapped across the face. Because you ain't thinking no more. You got to be ready before that. You got to be prayed up. You got to be read up. You got to know that who my God is. You got to remind yourself of the mighty works of God. It's our job as believers to exalt the God throughout the whole world, to exalt Him, to speak of His mighty works. What has God done in my life? I mean, I, I'm going to tell you, that's, that's what we've got. We've got to understand that. We've got to know this is God. This is the one. And not only that, but be still. Know that I'm God. Why do, can we be still and know that He's God? Because God fights our battles, y'all. God fights our battles. We don't, we, don't, we don't fight them. We can't fight them. We cannot win in our power, in the power of the flesh. You can't fight your battles that way. You've got to fight your battles in the spiritual realm. You've got to fight your battles through the Lord Almighty, that God is the one that gives us the victory. He's the one. It's Him. Him, Him, Him. Be still and know that I'm God. Be still and know that I am a refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble, that when you face that thing that you don't want to face, that I am there in the midst of it, and I'm going to fight this battle for you and through you. I'm not saying you ain't got to show up, but I'm saying that you ain't going to win because of you. You're going to win because of who you serve. You're going to win because it's God that gives you the power to do these things. And we all fight seemingly impossible battles in life at times. Right? Impossible at times. It feels like we can't, we can't win. We can't do any of those things. I mean, we just wonder what we're going to do. I, I want to I kind of close it out with, with this today. Um, I like to use David. First Samuel, chapter 17, starting in verse 45. David's about to come up against Goliath. He had no chance. I mean, if you looked at the two of them, and you looked at the giant versus this, this young shepherd boy that showed up, that, that can't even wear armor because Saul tried to give him armor and it wouldn't fit. And he said, I can't do nothing with this. I can't do And so what's he roll out there with? Some stones and a sling. Now he's going to fight a giant. I mean, that, that's got a humongous sword that's this huge and mighty and powerful. And, and notice how he goes. Because see, this is what you got to understand. The giants, the things in our lives that we're fighting right now, you ain't got no power over them. It doesn't lie in you. It lies in him. That's where the power comes from. We got we to gotta make sure we understand that it's God's power through us. So this is what the Bible says here in 1 Samuel 17, starting in verse 45. It says, Then David said to the Philistine, so he's talking to him, right? He said, You come to me with a sword, with a spear, and with a javelin. I mean, <laughs> he's armed to the teeth. But I come to you 
in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. So I want you to understand something. David looks out there. He says, well, I see you, man. You got a spear. You got a sword. You got a javelin. But I'm coming in the name of God Almighty. Hallelujah. This is how I'm going to fight this battle. I'm coming in the power of God. It says, this day the Lord will deliver you into my hand. Who's going to deliver him into his hand? The Lord, God Almighty, is going to deliver him. Right now, what you're facing right now, God is going to give you the deliverance. You're not going to deliver yourself. You can't deliver yourself. But God will deliver you. you got to trust in him. you got to trust in that. He says that, that this day the Lord will deliver you into my hand, and I will strike you and take your head from you. So God's going to do the fight, and God's going to do the deliverance. I'm going to have to show up and take a swing. See, too many people think, well, I'll just lay down. No, 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 no. I'm not telling you to lay down. I'm telling you to come in the power of the Most High God. I'm kind of telling you, you bring everything that God's given you to battle with, and you allow God to anoint it, and you give it to Him, and you say, all oh, the glory. If I win this fight today, it's because God. Not because of me, not because of my cunningness, not because of my fighting skills, not because of, it's because God was with me. He said, in this day I will give the carcasses of the camp of the Philistines to the birds of the air and the wild beasts of the earth, that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. And I'm going to show them. I'm going to show them there's a God in Israel because we're fixed to have victory and we're claiming victory in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. That's the way the church has got to be. We've got to face things in the power of God that he get all the glory. Then he says, then all this assembly shall know that the Lord does not save with sword and spear. For the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you into our hands. Church, I'm telling you. What's the Bible say? The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of of Jacob is our refuge. When everything in our world has gone crazy, who can we trust? God. He's got it. He's got it, y'all. He's got it. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. Sister Pat, if you come up here and uh, and close us out with a song today. they close in this in this song if if uh would y'all please stand as we <clears throat> as we close today if there's anyone that we that needs to be ministered to today anyone need a touch from god need prayer whatever it might be i invite you to the altar today god is present he's present here today He's with us. He's not left us nor forsaken us. And no matter what we may be facing right now, know that God is bigger than the giant that may be in your life right now. Whatever it might be. So I invite you this morning as we, as we close with this song that we understand and know how to fight our battles. Fight your battles on your knees and through the word of God that's how you fight amen it's not weapons it's not the power of, a, of the flesh but it's the power of the spirit of God that will give you the victory so I just invite you the altar's open if y'all would go ahead and, and uh, close us out this morning this is how I fight my